Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Razor King of the Beta. Day 6, the final day of the group stages. In the first group, we have QXC as the number 1, Into the Rainbow as the number 2, and Idra vs. Little 1. We already have Idra up 1-0. Whoever wins this series will be in the final 4. Big thanks to Razor for sponsoring this tournament. Their new mouse, especially along with their keyboard and headset, are absolutely fantastic for StarCraft 2 play. Definitely check those out at RazorZone.com, or at the very least, send them a kind email saying thanks for making awesome StarCraft events possible. We are going into game two right here right now, Idra, with the very passive, very tight, careful defense against everything that the little one threw at him, was able to win game one on the slightly Zerg unfavored map of Steps of War. We'll be going into that game in just a bit, I'm going to just clear all of these windows out, and yes, here we go. Looks like we have the little one uh, choosing Kulas Ravine, an absolutely brutal map for Zerg. <laughs> Very smart map selection there for the little one. Interesting because Idra was allowed one map downvote in this series, so of course having some nice friendly banter where Idra is joking. Um, of course, it looks like both players joking that they, in fact, have no idea how StarCraft is played. That's what everyone's going to say after that phase two of the beta, when you've had all those weeks of downtime. But, of course, if you're someone like me, you spent the entire time thinking about it and fiddling around in the, use, in the custom maps on the map editor. But either way, little one spawning in the bottom left position, and Idra, unfortunately, spawning at the bottom right. And the reason I say unfortunately is because of this cliff that Idra is approaching right now. Very abusable for Terran. They can hop Reapers up as such. They can land Vikings up here. They can even kill these destructible rocks here and have tanks march directly to the expo overlooking the Zerg's natural expansion. Makes it very tough for Zerg to maneuver. But Idra, of course, always a very solid Zerg. Plays extremely sturdy no matter what the odds. Sending out a scouting drone to the top right immediately. L little one looks like he is walling off the front. And of course, for those of you who are unaware of the map Kulas Ravine, many players call it Technical Ravine because it is one of the craziest maps. You see the number of Zelnaga watchtowers in the center. Excuse me, so many spaces to control the wide open natural expansion, the backdoor expansion with fewer minerals and the destructible rocks guarding it. Looks like Little One has gotten his gas at a normal time, none of his very fast factory antics. Looks like Idra is also doing an extremely fast gas build as well. I've seen Idra multiple times on this map, just favor the Baneling bust against Terran because it's almost impossible um, for, you know, in his eyes, to have some sort of good follow through into the later stages of the game. Players like Demaga like knocking down these destructible rocks and taking this back expo very quickly. And some players even favor the fast mutalisks, but it's going to be... I'm real curious to see how Idra's going to play this through. Often players will just get the zergling speed and expand normally. So, Command Center going down right now for the little one. It looks like he is also walling in with his factory again. Already starting to whack away at these destructible rocks. The Overlord from Idra is getting a good sense of everything that's at the front of the base. Sees the factory, sees the marine, and of course, the little one... Ooh, getting a little bit of vision of that Overlord house. Sneaky shrouded in a shadow. And the little one doing the smart move, just having one SCV have his own one person rave at the expansion to ensure that the uh, one drone cannot possibly plant at the front. And oh, it looks like fast roaches from Idra. Is he getting Zergling speed either? No, just going straight for the roaches. Very, very unusual play from Idra. This is the kind of stuff that we haven't seen on Kulas Ravine in a very long time. Last player I actually saw do it was a Zerg player over Sky, who infamously played 100 games in 24 hours. But of course, I uh, haven't seen any players favor very fast roaches on this map, with the exception of perhaps Demaga, who's been doing a lot of that in this tournament. Oh, little one, big blunder, lifting up to try to take out this Overlord, but letting two Zerglings in. And look at this beautiful split by Idra. Absolutely impeccable job scouting everything that's going on in this base. So there's the one Hellion popping out. There's the Starport popping out. Looks like we're going to see a very similar build to last game, but the little one has a lot more cliffs to work with. And look at this, Idra, going straight for the gold expansion. Hell. Well, why not? If we have the Roaches and the Zerglings to defend, we should be in good shape. But of course, the one danger that Idra is going to have to face is that he still needs to worry about a high ground ledge right here. Just enough space for a Viking or a tank to land. The Roaches are going to deny this Hellion Harass, but it's that Starport that's going to give him all the trouble. There's the Reactor now finishing. He's doing the switch, making a Command Center as well. Little One needs to figure out some way to knock down these Destructible Rocks, though, as they do have 2,000 hit points. And he is getting the Vikings right now. Looks like he will be able 
able to start the first one in just a bit. Started that command center just a little bit too early, so can't quite afford those uh, for the time being. But looks like Idra going to deal with the air pressure by just pushing with Roaches straight off the bat. Idra now pulling back to add on more larva to that front, but look at the little one having to pull all the way back. This wall off is the one thing that's going to keep the little one alive. Those Vikings do have range 5. The Marines have range 5, but oh, that's what you got to be careful of. Those Roaches with their short range will not be able to compete with the Vikings or the Marines, but that all rests on having good, good control. So there is one Viking out right now. Idra doing a lot of damage here, and Idra's gold expansion is up and running as well, and apparently morphing into a layer there in the last nanosecond of that frame. So the little one's going to have to make as many range 5 units as he can. He's going to have to land everything. Now see, Idra, these roaches are so sturdy that Idra can continue to poke at the front. And these two Vikings are pinned. They cannot advance forward. They cannot kill any overlords. It's going to have to be the third and fourth Viking of the little one that goes out to do any damage. Because the instant those Vikings leave, these roaches are going to start hammering away at the front again. Hellion doesn't do very much damage to the roaches. But still, it's any range unit that the little one can get that he will use to his advantage. So... Idra still on just one gas, transferring a lot of drones to this gold expansion. Very, very clever opening. Getting a lot of roaches for the early offense. And it looks like Little One going to expand to his back door. Fortunately, using that uh, special load-up SCV option to transfer easily. And yet more aggression. See the instant that these Vikings lift off to try to go somewhere else. These roaches are going to be at the back gates. But looks like the little one just going to try to straight up attack those roaches. Vikings quite good against roaches. Managed to take out two completely uncontested. So now Idra's the one who's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Having to pull back there again is the Hydralisk Den. Hydralisk, the staple unit for Idra's mid-game play. Vikings now moving forward. Going to try to track down any overlords they can. And here's the real danger. These queens die very quickly to these Vikings. So you have to be careful of Zerg, especially when you're spread out this far. The second expo is what's really dangerous. These three roaches are going to have to do some real magic if they want to hope to keep this expo alive. And there goes down yet another Overlord range 9 on those Vikings. So, so hard to deal with. And that queen's going to take a few shots, but not before the little one is able to kill off that single Overlord. And of course, land on the high ground to abuse the fact that there are no more things that can see up to the high ground. Leaving one Viking up, two Vikings up to kill off any encroaching Overlords. Meanwhile, back in the main. Uh-oh! Double Banshee coming out and the cloak. Looks like there is almost no detection anywhere for Idra. I don't see any spore crawlers. I don't see any overseers. And little one is completely shut down this gold expansion. For the time being, uh-oh! Idra needs to focus. He's, he doesn't realize he's getting his queen shot at. One queen falls for no reason. Idra putting himself on hold position a little bit too close to the ledge. And little one says, oh, thank you very much for the free queen and is going to back away happily. Idra doing another very smart move. Going to take down these two destructible rocks. Link up these two bases. It's going to be very, very tough tough to be able to defend this front ramp area. Hydro's finally coming out right now. And it looks like the little one also just rallying Banshees to this destructible rock to get some sort of advantage there. And somehow, it looks like a queen managed to sneak herself to the middle of the map. Oh! Two hit points left. Oh, poor little one. See, smart move, pulling back, not lifting any of those uh, Vikings up into the air as they would die almost immediately to those Hydralists, but... This poor queen has exactly uh, one life left after those Vikings were done with her. But she'll heal another day, especially if she uh, illegally transfuses herself. So the little one now throwing down two more refineries at his expo since he can finally transfer. A lot of, lot of banshees coming up. Looks like the little one only going for air dominance here. Unbelievably unusual play coming down right now. Three starports and Idra going to the unit counting station. How many overseers does he have? Zero. You see no overseers up there. Going to be very difficult for Idra to deal with this huge banshee viking timing. And if any overseers do appear, these four vikings are more than happy to obliterate it with that range 9. So here comes a huge push for the little one. Now Idra finally taking this top ledge expansion. Hasn't killed those key destructible rocks yet, but has finally started to join everything together with creeps so he can defend properly. And the Banshee's now advancing forward. Oh, this is just so brutal for Idra. And look at this, the Vikings fly directly into that. Oh no, now it means that there's going to be no way to deal with any Overseers if they do arrive, but I'm not entirely sure that the little one minds, as he does have so many many Banshees that he could possibly kill a decent number of Hydros that come in there. Look at yet more Overseers being made for Idra, and it looks like the little one just sprinting right here, gunning it for the Queen, going to be able to do some real damage to her, takes her down, 
heads to the drones. Gonna try to do some kills, but of course, Hydralis kill Banshees so, so fast. The little one trying to run off to this corner here, but whoa, a little blunder there by Idra. Is, uh, could have gotten one or two extra Banshees, but Idra wanted to pull back to this hatch over here, and finally we have some Spore Crawlers going down. But uh, looks like the little one just abusing the fact that